Hi, my name is Josh Decker. I'm Andrew Johnson. And for the uh, motor drive project, we looked at pulse width modulation schemes. All right. So some basics about pulse width modulation schemes. Pulse width mod modulation is a way to change the average voltage to a load. As you can see on the picture to the right, the average uh, voltage out output changes based on the percentage of the duty cycle. So at 0% duty cycle, up at zero. At 25% of five volts, we get 1.25. At 50% duty cycle, 2.5. And so on up to 100%, we get five volt output of, of an average voltage. Um, PWM is commonly used in um, inverters for AC motor control. And there are two common types of pulse, pulse width modulation schemes being sinusoidal pulse width modulation and space vector pulse width modulation. So we're gonna start with sinusoidal pulse width uh, modulation, which converts a direct current uh, voltage into a pulse AC voltage. So um, we're gonna have a DC voltage up here supplied to the top uh, of the switches and then the switches are going to be uh, controlled on and off to allow the voltage to be positive or negative based on um, the scheme we want to switch at. So to switch those switches on and off, the switches are commonly FETs or some other sort, sort of transistor that can be controlled. So to do that, we're going to compare a sine wave with a triangle wave and a comparator circuit. So as you can see in the picture to the right here, we have a sine wave here, and we're gonna compare that to a much higher frequency triangle wave. And then when the sine wave is greater than the triangle wave, um, the pulse will be high. So if you look here, we have from the peak of, of the sine wave from here to here, um, this pulse is on. And then down here, um, the pulse is only greater than for this little bit. So this pulse is gonna be much or negative for a negative duty cycle. Um, sine waves are often generated with oscillators and the uh, um, triangle waves are often generated with op amps with a capacitor to turn a square wave into a triangle wave. And that square wave is again generated with an oscillator. So to finish up sinusoidal uh, pulse width modulation, um, some common drawbacks are the maximum voltage available is the square root of three over two of the supplied line to line voltage. So if you supply, let's say 400 volts line to line, um, you can't get 400 volts line to line out. Um, you're gonna get a maximum of 0.866 times 400. It's about 360 to 380 volts line to line out. And that's due to the efficiency of the rectifier circuit. And then again, transforming that DC back into AC. And there are also some losses when we switch the feds on and off. And then also for more sensitive, more sensitive uh, motor applications, we need a higher frequency uh, uh, triangle wave so that the um, pulse widths and are more similar to the um, sine wave that we want, because obviously we're, we're um, approximating the sine wave with those pulse widths. Um, so obviously a higher frequency will lead to a more smooth appearance on sine wave. And again, some common applications for this would be sport speed and torque control of a motor. Um, and then we can sense that and then feed it back into the power processing unit. And then um, that sense feedback will then be used to control those switches on and off. Okay, so I'll be speaking of the uh, space vector pulse width modulation. So here I have a two level uh, inverter. It has a three phase supply and a uh, diode rectifier. And then it also has a DC link capacitor and an inverting bridge and a motor equivalent. Uh, on the next slide, we'll show it's simple. You can simplify the circuit by uh, uh, stating that the DC link voltage is held constant, which could remove the three phase uh, input and rectifier. And then for each leg, you could replace it, replace the transistors with one single pull double uh, throw switches, which just indicate whether or not the top transistor or the bottom transistor is active. 
So uh, these switches create uh, vectors depending on their positions, and they create eight total uh, uh, vectors on their combinations. So there's six nominal vectors as shown on the right there, and two zero vectors. And the two zero vectors are whether all switches are on or all switches are off. So uh, vectors one and six uh, go with leg A, vectors two and five go with leg B, and vectors three and four go with leg C. So uh, if you had a reference voltage, let's say at 30 degrees, uh, we'd know that we'd need to use vector one, vector three to find that uh, reference voltage. And so we would use a triangle wave to compare uh, uh, with the uh, voltage reference. And that would uh, show us when the uh, switches are triggered. And that triangle wave has to be at a much higher frequency like we've talked in class. So on the next slide, we'll have an example here. Let's see, we have three uh, phases there, phase A, phase B, and phase C. And um, so on the right, uh, compared to the triangle wave form, we can see uh, phase A is positive, and it's uh, a little over half. Phase B is also positive, going to 120 degrees, but it's close to zero. And phase C is negative at its full value. So uh, from there, we can convert that over to, uh, to the switching states. Uh, and it's shown on the next slide here. Uh, so there, coming, bringing down uh, where the values intersect, we can get the duty cycles of each, of each uh, phase or leg uh, at that exact given time. And also to graphically represent it on the circle, we can uh, bring down the dots where we have there and we can see from the left axis or zero to uh, where red intersects uh, there's no switches active then between uh, the red and the blue only uh, uh, leg a is active so zero zero one vector and then between blue and green we have both uh, phase or leg a and leg b active so zero one one and then when green is also active we have all vector or all uh, legs active, which uh, creates uh, another zero vector. So from there, you can see that we have the, uh, the um, uh, duty cycles of each uh, leg. So uh, some benefits of this circuit is at one given time, only one switch is changing, which reduces harmonics and also reduces heat from, uh, from switching loss. And it's also a cost-effective uh, solution for a PWM because of a, uh, the simple circuit that is used. And some applications for it would be flux-oriented control and uh, direct torque control. And then here's our references. And uh, thank you guys for watching our video. If you have any questions, please leave them below and we will respond to them as soon as we can. Thanks. Thank you.